All right, uh, your topic three review homework. First of all, I'm going to apologize. I made a video for this and um, made the entire thing in the slow motion feature and didn't realize it. So um, I don't have time to remake it, so I'm just gonna scan through what I already did and just touch on a few key points with you guys. Um, you are gonna wanna have to pause it then and just check what you did because it is gonna be just kind of like an answer key video. Um, the one thing I do want to say is when you're rotating, um, you remember you've got two methods. You've got the method where you can plug it into the rule if you remember it. You also have the method where you can use your hooks. So for example, so for G, I went down one and then left. So I'm going down and then left. And when I rotate that 90 degrees clockwise, that means instead of going down and left, I'm going to go left and then up. So you can rip that hook out of a piece of paper and use it to help you guys. Do that with all your points to find your image points and then graph it. Translations, they just move how they say. Um, when you're rotating around the origin of 180 degrees, again I can use the hook method. So for example, W would have to go left and then up. So left and then up. And then when I rotate it 180, doesn't matter which way. So I go 90, 180 means I'm going to be going right in the down the number that I counted by. When you're reflecting across the line, remember you want the points to be the same distance on each side. So if B is 4 right here, I want it to be 4 right here. D is 1, I want it to be 1. If it doesn't move off the line, it stays on the line. So similar methods can be used for these. Um, just some more reflections. Remember, wherever that line of reflection is, y equals x. That's a slope of 1 over 1. That gives you your positive line here. Making sure those points are the same distance away on either side. So q, I have to go the right one, so up one to get q prime. Looks like I'm reflecting it. r, up two, so I gotta go right two. Should look like it's a reflection of that image. t, I gotta go up four, so I'm gonna go right four. I do that with each of my points, or remembering the rule. Translations, I can just count them on my graph to find where they should go. Same thing with these reflections. Anytime y equals a number, it's always a horizontal line, making sure the points are the same distance away on either side. When it's x equals a number, it's always a vertical line. I want to make sure those points are the same distance away on either side. Um, the rules for these, I can't write rules for these because of how my shapes are on the line of reflection. So we're not going to worry about the rules here. Down here, you're supposed to look at the given graph and come up with the transformation that's happening, the description and the rule. So looking here, looks like it's a reflection. Identify where in the rule. Also looks like a reflection. Identify where in the rule. On the back again, doing more. Identifying the transformation. These look like a reflection. Identify where in the rule. You're doing that for each of these. Identifying what type of transformation is happening. Every time for these past ones, they've been reflections. I can tell because it looks like I just flipped them over some line. Down here, I can't just flip them. I have J to L prime, that's not a flip. L to J prime, that's not a flip, that is a rotation. So my rotations, figure out what kind of rotation and write your rule. Here, I've got a very obvious rotation. It's rotating this way. So identify where in your rule. Same thing down here. I have to have a rotation because the points are just rotating. And then over here, it just went up, so that's a translation. So identify the description and your rules. All right, um, over here, number 19, 20, 21, and 22. Again, more just identifying the type of transformation. So this one, it looks like it's all in the same orientation. It just went up and then right. So describe the transformation and your rule. Over here, my figure just went down and then right. It kept the same orientation, so describe that. Write your rule. Here are some more horizontal and vertical lines. Remember, up and down, vertical is always x equals a number wherever it crosses the x-axis. Vertical is always y equals a number wherever it crosses the y-axis. And again, I can write my descriptions, but because the line's going through my figures, I can't really write a rule for that, so we're gonna um, leave those blank. Here I have a sequence, that means I'm doing more than one. So I have to do the first one first because we talked about order mattering in your three, four homework. So I do the first one, I use the rule to help me figure out those points. And then I took 
these points and translated them here, and this is the figure I graphed. Same thing here, do the first one first. So here's my rule, come with my points. Then for the second one, apply my rule, get my last of the points, that's the one that we graph. Same thing happening all of these. The first one, identify your rule, write your new points, and then for the second one, your rule, write your final points, and then graph it. Same thing over here. I just realized I did something. So um, our prime should be at negative two, four up here. So let's fix that real quick. So learning thing, I clearly that was too big. So that is actually what I've got here. So here are my points. Again, every time identifying the original points and then doing what it's asking you to do for the new one. Down here, you had to look at the shapes and figure out what transformation occurred. So looking from here to here, obviously had to rotate. So I rotated around nine degrees clockwise or 270 counterclockwise. When I did that, my shape ended up here. I realized I needed to move it a little bit left and then up. That would be my second translation. Over here, from the pre-image to the image, they are upside down. So I reflected the first one over the x-axis and then saw it had to move three more to the right to match up with the given image. Down here for 29, I noticed that they were, my image was upside down from my original image, so I had to rotate it a full 180, which ended me here, and then I had to slide it down and then right to get it exactly where my image is. Over here again, I noticed that my points were kind of like flipped. Looked like there was a reflection, but not an equal reflection. So I reflected it first over this diagonal line and then saw I need to move it three more up for the translation. On the back identifying line symmetry, that's when you can imagine we did the, the notes where we were actually folding that parchment paper. You can even rip out pieces of notebook paper to help you. Where can I fold that? Here I can fold it one time, none. Here there are five separate points I can fold it through or cut through my lines of symmetry through each point on my surface. Here just horizontal line. This one has horizontal and vertical. My flag only has one horizontal. Um, rotational symmetry, how many times can I rotate it where it matches up exactly? This rotated two times so that my order is two. Angle then would be 180. Here I could only go all the way around one time for a full 360, that means there's no rotational symmetry. Here there are six identical flakes, or parts of my snowflake, which gives my angle a 60 degrees. Here I can rotate this three times, so my order is three, my angle is 120. Here my order is two, my angle is 180, has to rotate two times. Here same case as number 38. It is, it's not the same till it goes all the way around. That means there's no rotational symmetry. The last thing here, do any of the above have point symmetry? So anytime it's a 180 degree rotation, that's your point symmetry right there. So 37 and 41.